free tickets to see your favorite football team play live. Best day ever. Best possible. Okay. Start the class with this little video here, which talks a little bit about um, fishing. You get to see a very fishing team play live. Best day ever. So you book flights, you made room reservations, and planned your trip. You got to your destination without a hitch, dropped off all your stuff at the hotel, and got on with big plans. Opening day came. You're ready to cheer your heart up. Only to find that there's no ticket waiting for you at the gates. You argued, begged, and tried your best to get in. Thinking back, you realize you've been to heaven. And no matter what you do or say, you just can't win. I thought the contest was real. Why did I even click that link? It sounded so real. Who am I kidding? So unbelievable. I just gave my personal details to Frosters. I didn't even stop to check. Why didn't I realize it was a sham? How could I follow the price scam? Cyber criminals know I get what they want. They'll set up traps and assure the union. They use big events, holidays, news, or anything that will get your attention as big. They'll send out spam with things to sites that promise cool videos, cheap or even free tickets, merchandise, memorabilia, the latest news and updates, huge discounts, and the biggest winnings to get the betting card. They'll use every tool imaginable, including social media. They'll promise you the world in exchange for your information. You'd be lucky if all you end up on are annoying survey But what if you man the malware made in sites? You won't only end up with effective prices. You stand with the water. Data you hold dear, like credit card details, are likely to land in the wrong hands. If that happens, you just step away from getting your identity stolen. All hopes not lost them. You can still enjoy your favorite games without becoming the next scam victim. Think before you click. Make sure the link you plan to click isn't malicious. Use a security solution that works. And before considering anything to steal, make sure you're not the one cyber criminals are stealing from. Okay, so this is uh, talking about phishing, and phishing is an example of social engineering. Uh, when we left on Monday, I showed that video where I went to someone's house and got their Wi-Fi password, and that was social engineering. That was in person, trying to manipulate someone, trying to get their Wi-Fi password. But a lot of social engineering attacks come in the form of phishing. You get an email that looks a little suspicious, but you click on the link anyways. Before you know it, you're infected with malware. Before you know it, you just gave someone your social security number and password to some website. So uh, today we're going to kind of focus on social engineering a little bit. And one of the things that it said inside of there, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. I highly doubt that you have a long lost uncle in Nigeria that's about to send you $10 million. It doesn't work like that, but unfortunately, people nowadays fall victim to that all the time. That's why you see that scam out there, because it works. People call the number, they reply to the email, they send a deposit to try to get that first check, and guess what? They never get any money in return, someone's laughing all the way to the bank. So really what we need to do is educate our users, educate ourselves. What are things that we need to be looking for? What are things that we can do to prevent these types of social engineering or, or phishing attacks? We mentioned that um, a lot of times with social engineering, they will use things that are in the, in the news. They say the disaster video here at the end. So they're looking for things that are current events, something that really sparks someone's interest, something they've seen in the news, something that they hold dear to their heart to try to get them to click on or to go to a certain website so that we can either steal information um, or possibly you know, gain some type of financial um, means from them. Some different ways in which we gather that information um, is going to be talked about in this chapter, but really the whole premise behind social engineering is we are relying on human weakness. Um, I always give the example uh, with social engineering, we actually talk about this in the hardware class as well later on, but you were probably social engineering when you were one or two years old, as soon as you could talk. 
because what you did is you went and you asked your mom if you could have a cookie. Mom said no, so then what did you do? You went and asked dad. You're trying to get what you want from people by manipulating them, or if you don't get it from the person that you want, you go and you ask someone until you do get the information that you need. Some of these people are relentless. They'll ask person after person after person until they actually get the information that they want. Now, I was prepared to go knock on about three different doors and then I was going to give up, but I got uh, lucky and I got the Wi-Fi password on the first house I knocked on. So that was just you know one example where I'm going to one house. Some people will go to house after house after house after house to try to get what they want. But again, what they're trying to do is rely on that human weakness. They're manipulating users to perform an action or gather that confidential information that can be used by the attacker. And some of their different uh, principles or methods that they use are listed here in this chart and also in the book. One thing they do is they try to use authority. So they say, I'm the CEO calling, or I'm the boss, or somebody that has more authority than you do. They, tr they kind of try to make you feel inferior. So it's directed by someone impersonating an authority figure or falsely citing their authority. Hey, I'm from the Bismarck Police Department. Uh, we noticed that um, you know someone's been rummaging around your house. Is there a time we can step by, or stop by to check out the place? Okay, then maybe someone shows up and they're really not from the police department. They just wanted to see if someone was home or not type of deal. Intimidation to frighten or, co or coerce somebody by threat. If you don't reset my password, I'm going to call your supervisor. So they're putting a threat in there. If you don't do this, this is going to happen. Consensus or social proof influenced by what others do. Hey, I called you last week and your colleague reset my password. So somebody else did it. Why can't you do this? We do this a lot of times when we're trying to return something at the store maybe. Hey, I tried to return something at the store last week and your supervisor okayed it. How come you won't do it for me? Or hey, my buddy was able to, to get that deal on that set of tires. Can't you do the same thing for me? We do this kind of stuff all the time, but usually it's not for malicious intent. Usually it's trying to score a good deal or something. So we're all kind of social, social engineers in our own right, but we need to kind of think on an attacker's point of view as well. Uh, scarcity, something that's in short supply, Hey, I can't waste my time here. I need this to happen. So you, you put that um, thought in their head that it needs to happen very quickly. And when someone's under pressure, they're more, they're more um, apt to crack, aren't they? If you're under pressure, you've got to get something done, you're more likely to give in. Urgency kind of goes with that scarcity. Immediate action is needed. My meeting uh, with the board starts in five minutes. Hurry up, get this done. I need it done. Familiarity or liking, the victim is well known and well received. Hey, I remember, I remember getting a good evaluation on you. Or I remember seeing you in that article. Or hey, I noticed you were the employee of the month uh, last week. You start to try to develop that rapport with them and kind of schmooze them a little bit. Um, kind of rub elbows with them and say, hey, you know, you're, you're a stand-up guy. Can you do this for me one time type of deal? And then the trust. We have confidence. You know who I am. Let's develop that trust relationship with that person. Again, what we're trying to do is manipulate someone so that we can get what we want. And if we don't get it from them, we'll go to the next guy and try the same tactics. They take social engineering in the book and they break it down into a few different um, attack types. Phishing, type squatting, pretexting, hoaxes, dumpster diving, and sh uh, shoulder surfing. The first is phishing. This is the most common type of social engineering attack. Typically, we'll send bogus emails claiming to be from a legitimate uh, a business. eBay, PayPal, Amazon, those types of websites, which are frequented by millions of users every day, have phishing schemes against them all the time. Why? Because on Amazon, on eBay, on PayPal, there's financial information, there's personal information, good target for identity theft. They attempt to trick users by providing personal information. Users are directed to an imposter website controlled by the attacker. So I've got uh, an example of a phishing um, page here. And the first thing that we really need to look at when we get a phishing page is, are the graphics correct? Is the, um, the type, or excuse me, the uh, uh, 
Um, the content as far as the typing, is that correct? Are there typos in there? What's the URL? Different things that we need to take a look at. Um, I'm going to go through some examples here in just a minute. Um, another thing to take a look at, is it actual English that we use? I think it was Patrick showed me at the beginning of the semester, he said, hey, I got this email, do you think I should uh, do something with it? What was it for? A job opportunity at, I yeah. can't remember what um, business it was. It was a, it was a link for the job application. A link for a job application. I said I probably wouldn't click on it because it said, dear sir or madam. Do we talk like that in the United States? Not so much. So that was my immediate red flag and I said, if you are considering clicking on the links in there, I would call that business that supposedly gave you the link to the application and just verify with them. Hey, is this a legitimate email? Should I be clicking on it? As I said, I have some examples here. So let's take a look. I've plugged this um, little game before, but this is the Nova Labs, the Nova, the Nova Labs Cybersecurity Lab. So if you go to Google and you just type in Nova Labs, you can play this game later on if you want. It's known as the cybersecurity one. And they have different um, tools and scenarios you can run through, but one of them is social engineering. <coughs> so if we take a look at this first one here, this is an email. So a phishing type of email. And what we want to do is we want to take a look at both these emails, one's legit and what one's not, and see if we can pick out the differences and see if we can pick out the ones that are actually the phishing emails. So if you see something that you think is a little suspicious or different from um, the two emails, yell it out and I'll, I'll click on it. The name, where's that at? The very first one the bottom, okay, he notices right away the names aren't the same. One says ANA, one says ANNA. -N -A. going to the entire address book. That's probably a little bit of a red flag. If this is someone that you know, number one, are they going to spell their name wrong? It could happen, but it's probably unlikely. They're sent into the entire address book as opposed to just a few of their friends. I can't think of the last time I sent an email to every single one in my address book. Okay, It probably doesn't happen very often. It could, but maybe a red flag. Anything else you guys see? The last paragraph? Yes. Western Union. Huge red flag. Why is Western Union a huge red flag for sending money? You don't have to do a whole lot. Someone gets a money order, they go cash it, that's it. Poof, they're gone. And it's all cash. It's all cash. That money is guaranteed. Okay, there is no recourse. Whereas if you use like PayPal, at least you can dispute. You can go through the claims process. You probably won't get your money back, but you may. Uh, I'll give you a couple examples. A buddy of mine's dad does a lot of video photography for um, weddings, and when um, HD digital cameras first came out, I'm talking about a camcorder, he bought one on eBay for three grand. The guy wanted Western Union. He paid for it. Western Union, $3,000. Never got anything. Gone. $3,000 down the drain. No recourse at all. My wife, when she was in college, wanted to buy, oh, what was a popular handbag then? Like a Dooney and Burke or something, I think, some kind of brand name handbag. Went on to eBay, bid on this thing, $176, paid through PayPal, never got anything in return, went through the claims process. Basically, PayPal said, we emptied out her account, here's $17.36. So she had a little bit of recourse, not much. It was too good to be true because the actual retail value of that bag brand new was like 500 bucks. If you remember watching that video, if it says if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Again, there's not someone sitting in Nigeria that's got millions of dollars that's going to send it to you because they're their, you're their long lost uncle. Anything else you guys can see on there? Second paragraph, first line. Second paragraph, first line, my flight leaves in a few hours, but I'm having, having problems uh, settling the hotel bills, and the hotel manager won't let me leave until I settle the bills. And what else? Probably this first paragraph, huh? 
I found I, all five differences. So based upon these two emails, which one is more likely to be the phishing attempt? One on the right, one on the left? Uh, one on the left. Okay, what these trying to do in some of these examples, create that sense of urgency here. Hey, my flight leaves in two hours. Um, up here, I'm writing with tears in my eyes, okay? I'm trying to uh, present that sob story. Send to the entire <coughs> address book. Western Union, spelling their name wrong. These are things that you have to look out for. Okay, this one's more of a, a website. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Differences that you notice. Address bar. There's actually a couple different things in here. One is HTTPS, and the other part here, zero is for Google, and this is not secure. If you are ever sending credentials, uh, forms of payment, credit cards, PayPal, those sorts of things, it should always be HTTPS. <laughs> the S stands for secure. You'll see the little lock on it. And what that means is a certificate is being used to encrypt the information. So any data that you send to and from that website will be encrypted. That's why you can send your username and password through this login box on the left because that information is encrypted. So if someone were to sniff the traffic, see what's going on between your stream, between your computer and Google, they would not be able to read that data because it's encrypted, probably with 256-bit encryption. Anything else that you notice here? One account to all of Google. Different font? Yeah. Right above it too, that looks different. Yeah. The actual... Um, oh, yep, account spelled wrong here on the right. And we got all five of them. So which one's the phishing? The one on the right. A lot of times, the phishing <coughs> page or the phishing email will look really, really good. Then you really have to analyze it. Am I HTTPS? Is that URL the actual URL? Is everything matching up? If there's one little typo in there, huge red flag. It's very rare that Google, huge player out in the um, internet market, is going to have um, errors on their web page. Another thing that some of these phishing guys will do is they'll actually take like a, a snippet of the real URL and they'll place it over top of the wrong URL. So unless you move your window or resize it, you wouldn't even notice that you're not on the, the real URL. If you are ever in doubt, ask someone. Call up the Google helpline, call your buddy, go to a different computer and see if the pages match. Don't just click on it and hope that you're on the right site. If you're ever in doubt, do some research check it out. Again, things to check for, URL, is it HTTPS? Are things matching up? Are there um, typos? Is anything in there a little suspicious? I've seen in emails where there's a link and you click on the link and it shows, I think it's emails, and it shows lower left hand corner mm -hmm. where you're going to go with it and it doesn't match with what's yes I've seen that too um, in like Chrome if you ho hover over a link see if I can find something here yeah, so it's down. usually something like way whacked out like you see this I'm, I'm hovering over a link lower left hand corner of the screen shows me where I'm about to go if they're not matching up, if, if you think what I'm about to click on is not matching up, it's not secure like the HTTPS, big red flag. Good example. If any of you guys ever get phishing emails or you see a phishing site, email me those. Just put in the um, subject phishing example because I like to have those things to show students in this class and uh, my hardware class. I just um, happen to find you know this Nova Labs which is a pretty good example too. So if you have, if you find uh, examples out there throughout the semester, let me know. Let's take a look at them at class and see if we can identify why it's fishing. 
Can I email you that one I found right now? Yeah. Tuesday? Yep, do that. Maybe I can just pull it up here after we go through this one. Um, here's another one. Now this is more kind of like what I did. They call on the phone. Let's listen. Hello. Congratulations. You won a free trip to space. Oh, what? A trip to space. You entered an internet sweepstakes six months ago, and we just made the drive. I don't remember that. It doesn't matter, because you've won two free nights in space and a week of astronaut training in Houston. I'll just need to collect some basic information for you to confirm your trip. Can I just look into this and call you back? No, I'm sorry. Get off the phone. And we'll have to try a new name. It's just the price. Okay. Well, then I accept the prize. Excellent choice. What name should I put on the reservation? Jane Smith. Okay, Jane. And in order to redeem your prize, I'll need to put down a security deposit on the equipment rental. What equipment rental? For the astronaut training. Things like a helmet, spacesuit, moon boots, just in case anything gets damaged. Hmm. All right, first I'll need your credit card number. Hello? Hello? Ma'am? Don't you want to go to space? Okay, well, to me the whole conversation would be a little fishy, but um, <laughs> what would you, about the transcript here, what, what should I click on as far as being, you know, a, a huge red flag? It doesn't matter. A trip to space. All of it? The whole, like I said, the whole thing, obviously, but... Um, Actually, that's not one of them. Uh, <laughs> but can I call you back? No, I'm sorry. Urgency here. Okay, let's uh, let's hurry this up. I I can't. You're gonna lose out on your your prize. What name should I put on the reservation? What name? Hey, you just called me. You have my information from my drawing. Why the hell do you need my name? <laughs> Uh, security deposit. That's right. If it's free, why do I need money? The credit card. I think that's. Like I said, obviously the whole thing, but. Speaking of phone, here's the best phone prank I've ever heard that actually worked. Not not a fishing thing, but. Um, some friends that I know, I'll just say, called up called up the neighbors and said, "Hey, we're from the the radio station. If you can answer this question, um, you guys want a free turkey for Thanksgiving." So they give them some easy question like, "Who's on the fa or who's on Mount Rushmore? Who are the four faces on Mount Rushmore?" Obviously, the uh, person they're calling gets it right, and they say, "Well, congratulations. We're going to have Taxi Nine Thousand, who's the sponsor of this competition." come deliver the turkey in the next hour. So then they call up Taxi 9000, send the taxi to the neighbor, the neighbor goes out, where's my turkey? The taxi driver's like, what the hell's going on here? What, I don't know what you're talking about with the turkey. <laughs> yeah. So not exactly a fishing scheme, but I thought that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> so should we trust this caller? No. Absolutely, I want to go to space. Okay, uh, three more here. Let's let's do these other three, and we'll continue on. Oh, not level two. Another email here. What's uh, what's a little fishy? What can I? First of all, from Google, from Google Incorporation, Google Privacy. I would say so. Gift card certificate dot zip. I see a uh, typo here. Dear goggle user, I have glasses but no goggles. Uh, what else do we see here? The whole um, person on the email. So 
So obviously this one's fishing, right? The domain is wrong. There's typos. There's an attachment. They're probably not just going to, if you actually did win a contest, they're not just going to attach that gift card to the email. You're probably going to have to call or go through some verification steps to prove you are the person that won it. Okay, next one is website, Amazon. Amazon gift card thing. Right one's not secure. Right one's not secure. Amazon spelled wrong. Amazon spelled wrong. Uh, the it doesn't have the credit or debit cards. Oh, okay, so just add payment and then just enter your details. I think yeah, something around here looks a little different to me. Enter your details, enter your credit card. Social Security. <laughs> but notice the look. It looks very, very similar. I mean, it is being near spot on. It's just little subtleties. Right away, Mike, notice it's not secure. If you're going to be putting credit card information, personal information, that better be secure. Otherwise, that is the number one red flag. I am never going to send personal information over a site that does not have security built in. Okay? But if they have security built in, then you need to check the, um, the security certificate publisher. So if you're still unsure, one thing you can do is you can click on that little lock. And you can choose the details. It says your connection to this site is private. And if you click on the details, it's going to tell you, when I view the certificate, who was that certificate issued to? Who was it issued by? When was it valid? This is issued by Google Internet Authority. Is it issued by VeriSign? If it's not coming from a, a trusted publisher, that would have a red, um, it'd be tinted red, I should say, probably, up in the URL. Also, they're not going to issue a certificate to someone that is not verified. These certificate issuers, the publisher certificates, are very thorough into vetting out who are asking for the certificates. They're not just going to issue Joe Schmo a certificate for Google.com. It does not work like that. These are actual clearing houses where you have to go verify all of your information, get the certificate, and see uh, whether or not it is actually Google that requested that cert. We'll get a little bit more into certificates in some of the other classes as we continue, but that's you know, a good thing to check is, you know, what if it is secure? Check out that certificate if you're still unsure. Yeah. Sometimes initially when you click on it, it'll say, oh, this certificate's not verified or whatever. Do you still want to Do you still want to proceed? Obviously, you probably shouldn't. Although I have been to a couple sites where you do need to do that because their certificate is either, like, out of date or um, it doesn't meet the minimum requirements. So it's an error on their end. But I knew for sure that it was their actual site. Okay, where were we at here? Back so on. So, if your ticket gets expired and you have secure, are they liable at all, or are they still just um, if you were to make payment and then? Oh, that's a good question. It's stolen because it's supposed to be secure. Is that just put on the? If it's the actual site and their certificate is expired or not to minimum requirements, I think you would have some sort of recourse. I don't know who or how or why you would, but um, I would think you'd at least have a case if you wanted to file a, a lawsuit against them or, or something. You could say, hey, I knew this was your site. Um, I knew I was on the correct site, but your certificate wasn't valid and it let me proceed. Now, that'd be a tough one, but good question. Uh, other questions with this phishing site? This one's obviously the one. 
Okay, last one here. Can I help you? Hi, I'm here for a two o'clock interview with David Conley for the sales job. What's the name? Julie Morgan. Uh, great, please have a seat and David will be right with you. Um, I'm wondering if you could help me with something, if it wouldn't be any trouble. Sure. I was waiting in a Starbucks outside and someone bumped into the table and spilled coffee all over my papers. It's a total disaster. Could you help me print off a new copy of my resume? Because I really need it for the interview. Uh, I'd be happy to help. Okay, thank you so much. I've got a copy on a USB. Just let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. I'll just plug it in. And what's the name of the file? Let me see. Resume.pdf. Right there. Got it. Okay, and it's printing now. Thank you so much. You're a lifesaver. There you go. And here comes David now. Good luck. Okay. Is there any red flags in here? No, the USB Yeah, USB. PDFs on there. I got a copy on USB. The whole coffee story. Right here? Mm, no, I guess not. Where's that at? Do I really need it? Where's that at? This here? This one? No. Now, should we trust Julie? No. Yes. No? Yes? Don't trust Julie. Who says no and why? Why no? Well, I watch a lot of Mr. Robot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when they plug in USBs, bad things happen. So <laughs> stuff goes missing. Stuff gets uploaded and stuff. I feel like this could be avoided though, because the like as far as IT goes, you can stop USBs from being allowed. You, you can for sure. Work every time I plug mine in, that stupid thing just can't go. I feel like it's a security issue without like social. Good point. It, it could be avoided. There are things we can put in place, and that's kind of what this class is about, is to think about these things and what can we put in place to prevent this from even happening. Why, why should we have to sit here and debate whether or not we want to trust this person? If we have appropriate measures in place, it, it's going to be a non-issue. For those that think we should trust it, why? Why should we trust her? Sounds like a reputable story, right? The only thing that, for me personally, the only thing that makes this sound believable is when she says, I am here for the two o'clock interview with David Connolly, and the guy says, What's your name, Julie Morgan? He doesn't say, Wait, he's not expecting a two o'clock. She knows his name. He doesn't say, Hey, that's not, that's not his name or who you're looking for. So this one's kind of 50 50. Do you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say, normally you email your resume along with having a hard time. Well, she had uh, spilled a copy. But I, like most of them, would bring, try and bring a copy too. For we do teach that. Bring your a copy of your resume with. That way, if someone asks you about something you put on your resume, it's not surprising you. You're like, oh yeah, that's what I did put on my resume. All in favor of hitting trust, raise your hand. Six, seven, all in favor of not. Four, five. Okay, let's do it. Unlucky, you were wrong to trust Julie Morgan.
Okay, this could be an innocent request, but asking you to print out a computer file should make you suspicious. It might be a way of getting you to download malware onto your computer. Never use a memory stick from an unknown source just by plugging it in. You could download malware onto your computer. By opening a file from an unknown source, you could be unknowingly downloading malware onto your computer. So it's not so much that she particularly is the threat. It could be that she is here for the interview. It could be here that she does need her resume, but you have no idea what's on that USB drive. It could very well contain her resume, which he printed out, but it could also contain some malware that she's not aware of. So it's not necessarily that she is the attacker, it's the USB drive here that's in question. We're putting it in, we're running something on there, and sometimes just by putting a USB drive or DVD drive into a computer, it auto runs the EXE now you're infected with malware. Yeah. We've had a computer in the shop for like the last week. This is the third time now. We get it back. Everything's clean. We get it back to her. Within a day, she's like, it's, it's acting up again. It comes back and it's, and it's infected again. Infected. And so this is like a, I don't know, 80 year old lady. Okay. So yeah, either it's something that she's plugging it into. Something she's or running. She's clicking on something. You know, that's the kind of person where you need to be over her shoulder watching what she does when yeah, she gets that. What doing today. What's she? Okay. Yeah, they, they brought it in, they cleaned up and said, okay, where are you going? Or what are you doing? And mm -hmm. this it's, I mean, like three times, she's like, well, it's doing it again. You'll have to let me know what she's doing. Because that happens a lot. The user doesn't realize what they're doing is, is uh, not appropriate, and then they end up being infected. Uh, another example I've heard of this um, is people taking USB drives, going to like the Ram Coda where there's conferences, and when the conference is going, going on, just taking the USB drives and scattering, scattering them around tables, and people think they're freebies. Yep. They grab them, they put them into their computer, they're now infected. Uh, one example that they did was um, at a conference, one of the head security guys, they said it was, uh, I could pull up the video later if I get a chance, um, but the head, one of the head security guys from Microsoft picked up one of these USB drives, put it into his computer, and it was actually a tracking device. And from that day on during the conference, this guy could tell exactly where this guy was going with his laptop. It connected to the USB somehow, and he had that connected to his phone. So from there, he was able to get into his voicemail, and he was able to um, manipulate the message and do a bunch of different things, all from this guy grabbing a free USB drive and putting it into his computer. So be very careful where you're getting that free stuff from. Okay, is it coming from someone's actual exhibit, their actual table, or is it just something you found laying around? Every time you guys have registration at VSC, you should put a little sign up because they give away the free list. They do. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not gonna go through the rest of these, but like I said, I just want to plug this Nova Labs here a little bit. One of the things you, you can do on here is a coding challenge. So you got your this little robot and you have to make him go through this maze. So you have to program um, the robot to do what you want it to do. Forward, I think. And then I'm going to turn left. And I'm going to pick up the item. No, forward, thank you. Then I'm going to pick up the item. And I'm going to go forward. And then I'm going to go left. And then I'm going to go forward. And then I'm going to go right. And then at the end, I'm going to mess up just to show you what happens. I was going through my moves on the right hand side and they obviously get harder as you go through them uh -uh. I ran out of moves but if you are, you're a problem solver you like to do some of, some of these things check out this lab and hopefully this stuff does interest you because that's why you're thinking about having a career in computers so there's the coding there's the, the social engineering and the phishing stuff and then there is also password attacks. And I haven't found the password attacks to be that great, but um, 
How do I exit out of here? Snapcat. You gotta win. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, guy. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> All right. There's some different uh, variations on fishing. Uh, when I took my Security Plus certification exam, which is actually what your guys' next security class is based around, is the Security Plus. I had to know these different um, terms and they can be very um, similar in nature. So fishing, basically you're targeting anybody. Spear fishing is you're targeting a specific user. So you're using that spear to get a specific fish. Um, typically with um, spear fishing, you pick one target and you go after that one target specifically using um, social engineering methods because you know a little bit about that person. Whaling, you're gonna attack a big fish, a wealthy individual, a CEO, someone that's higher up on the totem pole, so to speak, and you're trying to get that big fish to give out some information. Uh, fishing. Voice, think of V for the, the voice that uses the telephone. So some of the examples I showed with the Snapcat, that is vishing. Another form of social engineering, which is kind of shifting gears here a little bit, is typo squatting. This take, it takes advantage of users who are making a typing error when entering a URL address. So instead of typing in google.com, you accidentally type in goggle.com. And when you go to that site, um, it takes you to a malware site or it takes you to a site to buy goods that you necessarily didn't, um, weren't thinking about purchasing. This happens quite a bit. I probably fat finger URL once a day. So it's a very common um, attack. So for example, if you go and you type goggle.com because you forgot an O, This one happens to take me to some uh, shopping site, which looks like it sells junk. Very cheap junk. But it's cheap. So, okay, now I'm sucked in. I'm going to start looking through this, and I'd probably be very uh, leery about clicking on some of these links, but you never know. Those are sweet. Notice the variety of products on here. <laughs> but in the course of scrolling down here, there's going to be one product that interests everybody in this room. There's going to be something on here that interests you. Some, someone said, ooh, Tupperware. Someone said, ooh, USB. Someone said, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay, I'm going to click the buy now. <laughs> It's taking me to Amazon. Is this Amazon secure now? Yeah. HTTPS. Let me look at my certificate to make sure it actually is Amazon. <coughs> yes, it was issued to Amazon from Symantec. Okay, it's good until 26 or 12 2016. This is a good site. What's probably happening is whoever developed this goggle.com is getting referrals. They're getting kickbacks for every single time someone clicks on the link every single time someone buys something. So in its nature, it's probably not malicious, but in the back end, they're trying to make some financial gain off of it, okay? The goggles, where were those at? Ooh, those? Yeah. 30 bucks. If you walk into class with these tomorrow, I'm gonna be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> we should require that every student has these for the hardware lab when you're digging inside the computer. <laughs> so that is typo squatting. Anybody think of any examples they've been to off the top of their head? What was that? What's the um, website for online classes? That was that. Bismarckstate.edu. It's like not. It's like Netacad or something. Oh, the Netacad. It's like the Cisco one. 
But like when you type, when you type, well, it brings you to like this website with all these different like, languages and stuff. Do you know what you were typing? Maybe. Cisco.com or something. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I always had to go there for online classes. I don't even want to click on some of this stuff. It's probably going to pop up bad sites. <laughs> that one's not working. Sicko.com. Oh, I did type dot .om. I do that all the time. Or I missed the O in dot .com. It's trying to resolve the host. It's probably going to time out. But again, if you uh, have examples, maybe you fat finger something this week or over the semester and you say, hey, that's a typo squatting site. Let me know that. I'm always looking for examples. Uh, Pretexting. This is something that we're going to do with our fishing lab, if we can get that to fly is we're gonna pretext. Attackers create an invested or invented scenario to persuade the victim to perform an action or provide confidential information. Use different tactics to acquire information. The way we're gonna pretext is we're gonna say to our target, our friend, mother, brother, sister, daughter, whoever it is, we're gonna say, hey, like a day before, hey, I'm gonna send you a link to some Facebook pictures. I want you to check them out and give me some feedback on them, wherever you wanna pretext it. But what you're trying to do is plant that seed in their head that, hey, something legitimate is about to come in my email and I need to click on it so I can view those photos. And then what we're going to do is when they click on that email, the link, it's going to take them to a site that looks exactly like Facebook's login, but when they put in their username and password, instead of it authenticating them, login to uh, Facebook is going to send the information to a text file that we can view. Yeah. Why does it have to be an email and we can't like, send them a link in Messenger? That works too. Okay. Um, <laughs> I haven't exactly got the okay yet to do this, so I'm hoping it will. I like how you're, I like how you're fully fleshing this out, yeah. guys, and I don't know if it's legit yet. Well, I think, well, I think the reason why you would want to is so you can perfect the fishing. Yeah. Well, in order, in order to do what I want to do, we have to host the phishing page on BSC's network, and that's kind of frowned upon. And, uh, <laughs> that's kind of the method I'm going at at this point, so um, we will see. We'll see. I, I'm hoping we can make something work at least. At, at, in the very least, what we're going to do, if we can't each have our own phishing site, is we'll create one internal one and we'll target someone on campus. Like maybe Amy Helgeson, since your teacher, she might be a good person to target and we'll see if we can't pretext her, um, you know, and see if we can't get her to click on the link. But I'm hoping everyone can have their own individual phishing site and we can go through this process and kind of see actually how easy it really is. Um, in a matter of probably 10 minutes, you can create your phishing site and phishing email and send it off. Yeah. Can we try and fish the dean? Uh, I don't know if I want to go that high up the ladder. <laughs> then I probably won't be here the next week, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another form of social engineering attack is a hoax. False, whoops, false warnings. This can be used as the first step in an attack. We see this a lot with malware. You get this warning on your computer that says, hey, you're infected with a virus, and actually you're not. The warning itself is the virus or the, the malware. And then you click on it to try to clean your computer, and the next thing you know, your computer's locked up or crashed or has some type of ransomware. You have to download something, yeah. Turn your computer off. Yep. That's sometimes that's the only way you can do it. Um, Patrick said, you know, sometimes when you get those warnings, you can't click off of them. So what do I have to do is shut my computer off. Sometimes that's all you can do. The way they code it, as soon as you close it, it opens right back up. Some of the best things you can do is shut the computer down at that point, unplug it from the network, boot up, scan it with something like malware bytes, maybe even in safe mode and uh, hopefully you can clean it before it actually got infected. 
Uh, dumpster diving. I will not record a video of myself dumpster diving, sorry. But uh, that's what some people resort to. They're digging through actual trash to get useful information. Is it legal? Uh, dumpster dive. It's, I don't I know. It's <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You'll get, if cops see you, you'll get stopped, but they don't, like, I, I don't know how many cops are going to see you digging through a dumpster looking for stuff. Yeah, you'd probably get charged with maybe trespassing and potentially stolen, I don't know, stolen property. I, I don't know. <laughs> what they're looking for, they're looking for personal information, credit card offers that maybe have some personal information, basically shred your your uh, your mail, shred your papers before you throw them in the dumpster. Um, companies pay big bucks to have their data shredded and burned and destroyed. You've probably all seen movies before where they go through the shred bin and they try to piece together the different pieces of shred and sometimes they're successful. So sometimes shredding's not even good enough. Shoulder surfing. Information entered is observed by another person walking around looking to see their PIN number as they're typing it in. Computer passwords, you name it. Um, you might not even realize someone's behind you looking at that type of information. So just another way in which we can gather information. This is some of the information that they might want to gather. Calendars, inexpensive computer hardware such as USB flash drives, memos, organizational charts, phone directories, policy manuals, system manuals. Sometimes attackers will take years to gather the information that they want. They want to see the organizational chart. They want to see what times of the day people are working. They want to see what their job tasks include. They want to gather as much information as possible because they want to sound liable, or they want to sound believable, excuse me, um, with the information they're going to try to fish, or they want to sound like they're a part of the company or that they're a contractor with the company. So sometimes they will literally take years in order to, to uh, make their attack successful. Um, let me see how much I got left here. Okay, I'm going to show... Marshall, did you send that email? Yeah, I believe so. Let me see if I can pull that one up. Then I got a quick little video and then we'll probably be done for the day. Bubba? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> Okay, so Marshall got this one, popular in your network, info at twitter.com, subject, NBC News tweeted, new advanced limitless pill will go public in less than 24 hours. Yeah, so it's out now. So anyone seen the movie Limitless? That's what this is kind of based around. Looks pretty legit. NBC News at NBC News headquarters. Gives us a link. Oh, oh, yeah. Watch that link. Where did that come up? Notice it's a redirect. It's not going to take me to NBC News. So. It's going to take me to <laughs> t.co. It is secure, though, right? It is secure. Have you clicked on this? In an incognito window, yeah. What? I mean, can I go to it? Is it going to? No, there's nothing on it directly. It's just it shows like what would look like an actual legitimate web page from Maggie Fox, who is actually NBC News like health writer, but then all the links on it work to go to the website and everything. Okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not listed on their actual webpage. Well, virtual machines is what I should be using right now, but <laughs> I'll risk it. Okay, it looks very legitimate. The URLs look a little suspicious to me. Notice they're not matching up. Not secure. I'm not on a secure website anymore. Oh, there's a pop up. The email in itself looks pretty darn good, I think. It's actually coming. Info at twitter.com. Man, you're right to be suspicious about this. If I were 
If I didn't ask him about clicking on the link, I probably wouldn't have. And if I did want to, virtual machines are an excellent way to test some of this stuff because if you mess up a virtual machine, who cares? You can just roll it back. But now if I mess up my laptop with all my data on it, now, nah, I probably don't want to be doing that. Okay, yeah, uh, one last video here for a precursor to what we'll talk about next week. Uh, it's not, yeah, I'll do that one. There was a different one I wanted to play, but this is very close. We're gonna need this. Ah. Come on. Hi, I'm Jack Vale, and I wanted to see how easy it would be to get personal information from complete strangers. And while well, I'm at it, of course, to freak them out a little bit. Keep in mind. Watch this video. I got all of this information just by searching their personal social media posts. And I got it by searching. For, for the closest, closest Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media oh, posts okay. to my current location. 3G buffering. I guess I gotta dummy it down, alright. Can't handle the 720p. Let's, Let's go. go. So, so are, you, are you, is your name Jessica? Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm, 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 I'm Jack. Jack. Hi. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. How are you? Ashley! <laughs> Whenever it comes to me and I know who it is, I know it's weird. But I, I have to shout it out to see if I'm right, and in that case, I was right, so. What the f are you doing? You mean Stephanie? How are you doing? I'm Jack. Did you just make that up? You just said that? No, uh, Elena, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. I was just going to say happy birthday. Someone in your family referred to you as Pops. Is it like a dad or a grandpa or something? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you too, because I know you were actually, I should have said it to you because you were a little before hers, but anyway. Well, it's been like seven weeks now or something like that, but anyway. Good to see you guys. See you later. Uh, like a little white curly dog, sort of, like a little white dog. Stop it. You have a dog? It wasn't Harris, so it was like the first few letters, like <laughs> hair or par or something like that. Am I right? I don't know what you get it. Seriously? Blanca? Blanca? Is that how did I? Blanca. It's what? Blanca. 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 Okay. Is that your mom? Bear, I feel like, or something like that. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It was like had lunch, dinner, or something like that. Chicken. There was chicken involved. I know for sure. You just shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. N nickel, 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 Nikki. <laughs> Am I <is> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Who's who's like Richard? I keep thinking Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Parker, like Peter Parker, who has a Spider Man, had a Spider Man flashback. Your last name starts with a K. Crow, 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 something like that. There's some business that you're in, some kind of a business that has to do with cell, cell company or phone company or something like that. Yes? Oh, uh, wait, 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 is it AT&T? Uh, AT&T, yeah. Let me see what else I can find out from your Instagram. So this is a social media experiment. Video cameras. Remember that picture where you were able to find out all kinds of other stuff? <laughs> No, no, I just... Oh, no, it was just a, it was just a little prank. It didn't even have a prank. You're welcome. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my name's 
to Jacksonville. So I use social media all the time, and this experiment is definitely just a prank. So all you gotta say is just a prank. <laughs> Um, so when we continue up next week, we're going to talk a little bit about identity theft, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, social networking risks, and then we'll get into some things that we can do to prevent some of these things. All you need is a little crack. All that guy needed was a little crack to gather a ton of information. So just keep that in the back of your mind. What are you exposing out on the internet? What are you exposing that is personal to you? All they need is a little bit of information, and they can get deeper and deeper and deeper into your world. So we'll stop there for this week. There shouldn't be any homework in this class over the weekend, and we'll continue up with chapter two next time we meet.